guess what I'm printing. Yep. I wonder if anybody can actually guess. At some point I'll show you guys how this works. I have made slight improvements to this thing. I got a voltmeter on here. It tells me exactly the health of the power supply. 12.3 volts. I actually checked it with the multimeter. Hmm, pretty good. And I put an hour meter on this about two days ago. Yes, you read that right. There's 28 hours on this meter already. This is the second time I'm trying to print out that object. Um, I'll give you a clue. It's for my wife. No, she's not going to wear it, but it's for her. It's a gift. I figure she can put her cell phone in it or something like that. This is going to be about a 12-hour print. 0.2 mil. And I think uh, the infill is at like 60 uh, millimeters a second. And the outer diameter and basically the shell I think is at around 3540. It's a pretty big object actually. It's one of the biggest I've ever printed. Um, this is probably one of the biggest I've ever printed as well. But it came out pretty bad. Notice the warping? No heat spreader on the table. So the table is not heated up evenly. This area over here, there's almost no heat there. So this thing lifted up. And it looks like crap. Plus there's no heated chamber or anything else. I'm working on that. One of the things that I want to do is uh, put a heated chamber in this thing. And, uh, well that's about it. Oh! Made a little bracket for this thing. It's it's one of these uh, cheapo TP-Link routers. It's about 17 bucks shipped. And a uh, $5 USB adapter. Also from eBay. Um, that's hooked up to a 12 volt power supply. This thing is uh, running DDWRT now and no longer running the TP-Link firmware. But what it does allow me to do is run USB over IP. Therefore, this printer is essentially wireless. Awesome. Well, I got interrupted. Uh, that's a woman's shoe, just in case uh, nobody guessed it. I'm sure most of you did anyway, but it's a woman's shoe. Oh, and this is my self-designed extruder. It's using a recycled printer gears. I got this out of an old laser printer. It's got to be like, oh God knows, 20 years old. And I printed out these little adapters, like here. There's an adapter inside of here that's actually holding um, a GT2 pulley. It's uh, JB welded in place. Versus this part over here, there's no JB weld in there. It's just actually a mechanical friction. There's a positive and negative because the gear had a uh, bulge to it. I measured out everything with my trusty caliper and uh, printed out these parts. Uh, they're in white ABS. So I'm actually printing in this black ABS I got from eBay. It was about 21 bucks shipped. Actually it's pretty decent material I have to say. It's a lot better than the white ABS I was doing. Well white. It's a natural color ABS. In either case. Um, but yeah the extruder is actually working pretty damn good. It's got a bit of a creak to it because eh, it's not really all that perfect but it, there's no lash. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. This is kind of like my own little take on the Air Trippers extruder, but uh, taken to a whole new rigidity level. It's all uh, printed out of ABS. This is, actually was a pretty big piece. I think it's about 180 mil or something like that long. It's almost 200 mil. But one of the things that I did to it was over here, I inserted a piece of aluminum in there. Because this part and this part this is actually a hinge there's four screws underneath here let's see them there that hold it to the main body and then there's the main pivot screw I gotta shorten this up but it's there main pivot screw that's holding this uh, uh, bearing notice there is no spring here none I decided to do away with it and uh, this thing actually delivers an incredible amount of torque. I didn't think it was capable of doing that. The ratio is about uh, 
one to two. So basically, every RPM of this, you get. I'm sorry, every two RPM of this, you get one RPM of this. About. So it's doubling the torque, halving the RPMs, which is just fine because this uh, stepper motor, even though it still gets quite hot, is um, quite capable of delivering those RPMs at retraction. But it's still very torquey, and uh, the fitting, the pneumatic fitting, is actually uh, threading into the aluminum plate, not into the plastic. Because with my air tripper, I had to glue it, this, that, and the other. I designed it in such a way that it holds this. Uh, this is the closest thing I could get to a five millimeter shaft. It's basically an oversized. Uh, I'm sorry, it's an undersized uh, quarter inch screw, so it's threaded all the way through. It's coming up to here. There's a square nut. Yeah, I'm sorry. There's a square nut there that's holding it. There's another square nut here that's holding it. A little bit of a brass facing. A bunch of these nuts that are basically counteracting against each other. I don't have, I didn't have any. Um, thread locker so I used uh, ABS goop and actually it's been holding up just fine I'm surprised uh, the bearing is um, again this is my own little design it's fine it's mm, I'm quite happy with it actually I might actually uh, design a belt version of this and uh, sell this one off I'm sure there's somebody out there that doesn't mind uh, powerful extruder that creaks <laughs> um, <coughs> well that's about it oh and of course as I was leaving off before I printed out these variable size um, pulley holders I made the made I replaced the threaded rod with one that's slightly longer you have a dome nut here so people don't walk by and, and get cut or anything like that on the thread uh, there's spacers here that basically this whole thing rides on a bearing but I can still register a little bit of preload so once I tighten this this slight bit of preload and that's just dandy to keep the wheel uh, turning smoothly very nice um, what else uh, well at this point I'm waiting for some parts to make the heated chamber a reality. I gotta cut cut up some aluminum to make a heat spreader for this table. And uh, here are here is the. And can you actually see it? It's about 10% done. Two hours. Uh, it's 11.7 millimeters. So as you can see, my my print is 220 on the head. 85 on the bed not bad and that's a Chinese J head it's been running very nicely actually with that ABS plastic huh. would have thunk it um, there's still some slight like boogery textures that are very 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 easily pulled out um, I'm still tweaking on the retract and everything else but um, oh and uh, that extruder actually uh, once I tell Proner face to push out a hundred mil worth of plastic it actually will push out exactly a hundred mil worth of plastic I am very very happy with it but the calculation basically makes it like a I think it's like a 12 digit number so it's like 177.358 or whatever all the way down so it's weird, but it works. It works very well, actually. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, it's it, it's not a noiseless printer, but I don't actually find it that annoying. It really is not that annoying. I don't know why people say Deltas are noisy. Eh? The maker bought uh, two at Micro Center was just about as noisy as this thing. And it has nowhere near the build volume this thing has. Nowhere near. Although it doesn't take up as much space as this thing does. I can put two of those in the space of this one. But this would probably print out twice the volume in one shot. And it's faster. That's why I loved the, uh, I decided to build a Delta. Speed, right? Speed versus size. 
Oh, that's about it. I think this is a pretty decent update on Tuki. Again, this is, that's just a pet name, but I think I'm gonna name it that. I'm actually thinking about using this printer to make some nice things for people. Not thinking, I mean. The shoe is for my wife. <laughs> Alright, have a great day, people. And uh, see you next time. Bye. Guess what? It's done. My wife will like this. I hope. I haven't removed all the support material just yet. I'm afraid of cracking it actually. Weird. Kind of um, very weird. Well, good morning. <laughs> Bye.